بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Privacy is power what people don't know they can't ruin Unfortunately we are living in an era where we expose ourselves and we put ourselves into vulnerable positions where people can exploit us and abuse us as well. So it's very important that we are very careful and cautious what we put out there. Otherwise a person will become susceptible and defenseless in a situation where important information is exposed. So we find that uh, Dean has highlighted this privacy, whether it's the amana and trust which Allah uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala has put on every believer. And secondly is on yourself as well, that the information that you have about yourself is an amana. By releasing this information, you are compromising yourself, which a believer shouldn't. Look at the incident of Umar radiallahu anhu when Hafsa radiallahu anha was proposed to Hazrat Uthman radiallahu anhu. And he told him, In shi'ta ankah tuka Hafsa, I will marry you with my daughter. So he said, Sa'anthur fi amri, I will uh, revert to you. فَلَبِثْتُ لَيَالِيَ ثُمَّ لَقِيَنِي So some nights passed and I met him and he said I will pass on this offer فَلَقِيتُ أَبَا بَكْرٍ فَقُلْتُ إِنْ شِئْتَ أَنْكَحْتُكَ If you want Abu Bakr you can marry my daughter فَصَمَتَ As Abu Bakr remained silent فَلَمْ يَرْجِعْ إِلَاشْ إِلَيَ الشَّيْئًا And he was silent so Umar radiallahu anhu says, I was more upset to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu than Uthman radiallahu anhu. So some days passed and Nabi alayhi salatu was salam proposed to her. So when Hazrat Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu met Umar radiallahu anhu, then he told him, لَعَلَّكَ وَجَدْتَ عَلَيَّ حِينَ عَرُضَ عَلَيَّ حَفْسَ Probably you were very upset when you proposed but I never said anything فَلَمْ أَرْجِعْ إِلَيْكَ شَيْئًا And you were surprised and maybe you were upset also. So Abu Bakr is giving the reason that there was no reason for me to re reject except أَنِّي كُنْتُ عَلِمْتُ أَنَّ النَّبِيَّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وسلم ذَكَرَهَا The Nabi of Allah mentioned it to me of his proposal and his inclination to that فَلَمْ أَكُنْ لِأَفْشِيَ Sirra Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I didn't want to reveal the secret of Nabi alayhi salatu wa sallam and the fact that I didn't want to reveal it walau tarakaha al-Nabi Nabi alayhi salam did not uh, propose and he uh, abandoned that idea then uh, I would have very easily accepted the proposal so not divulging information and keeping information uh, the secret and, 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 and not revealing it is very important. So he didn't say anything at all. He didn't mention anything. He was just silent. So important keeping other secrets and keeping our own secrets as well. So privacy, so the fact that on your gadget, on your phone, on your laptop, you've made yourself vulnerable, that itself is a question mark, because that's your amana, and you're supposed to keep it as an amana. So deen is clear, and when a person doesn't follow deen, they'll have regrets. So at any given time, we follow our shahwat, we follow our desires, we do certain things, those vulnerabilities will catch up with a person. One is the worldly system catches up, but one is the system of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So each ayah, each hadith 
is there to guide us. We need to follow the guidance. Ayah is called Ayah. Why? It is a sign, like a sign that's indicating when a person is lost looking for directions, whether he looks at the signs on the road or he looks at the sign on the garment, the GPS. These are signs to take you to your destination. Quran and Hadith are signs. Tilka ayatullahi natluha alayka. Ayatullahi natluha alayka. These are the ayat of Allah which we recite unto you. So every ayah is a sign, it's a proof, it's a remarkable event, a phenomena that will elude one to Allah Rabbul Alameen. So firstly we have to make sure that we don't have weak passwords. So for a person to, to solve this problem, then you get a password manager. So password managers store passwords in a locked vault and allows a one-click access. They can also generate strong, unique passwords as well. So, but some issues, one is that the password manager uses a master password for access. If somebody infects the computer with malware and steals that master password, then the entire database is compromised and uh, through key login obviously they will have a record of every keystroke you make and that's game over. So pen testers, they see how they can compromise password managers by finding a back door to these managers and once they crack the password, they've got the privileges of the entire kingdom, all your treasures. The other problem is that if you lose your master password, all your passwords are gone. So if you've got a lot of accounts and your master password is gone, then that's an issue as well. So a person needs to have strong passphrases, not a password, passphrases, which has a lot of characters. So ideally, researchers say at least, at least minimum 20 to 25 characters. So that's where they just small, your capital, your, your numbers, your, your, your signs, a combination of that. So you get some good password managers, but you have to make the call. There's no one rule for everybody. So password safe, key pass, ID guard, but you want an offline password storage whether it's a uh, on a memory stick and it's stored so it shouldn't be online you want cold storage another important rule is never use the same password twice it's very difficult but uh, even if a person has a strong password then technology against technology so password guessing programs like john the ripper it's free it's open source it can be downloaded and it can be configured based on the parameters which you want to use it. So these hackers can simulate and possibly identify the combination of the letters, the numbers, the symbols, the parameters until they crack the code. So this is a normal average where it can be hacked. Imagine if there are organizations and institutes that specialize in this. So besides the pass phrases, you have lock screens. So research shows that 34% of Americans don't protect their mobile devices with any security measures at all. So generally people are negligent to with regards to this as well. So the lock pattern, which is the nine dots which appear on the screen and uh, a, a, a password conference which which did some research they found that this lock pattern has 140,704 possible combinations but most people use what is predictable generally the first letter of their name or their surname the first child firstborn's name 
So these are easy things. So we, we, we shouldn't be predictable. Then a person may be using facial recognition for security. But it's very easy to just go into the person's uh, profile, go into his fo Facebook page, Instagram, get an image and have a high resolution image in front of the camera. So even facial recognition can be bypassed. Likewise biometrics as well. So uh, that's very easy to bypass. So we, if we want to really be secure, then a person should try to have a two-factor authentication. So you might think so that uh, they can't get in, but just the password reset. So when a person sets up a account, then there's security questions to reset your password or they will send it to your email. If they hack into your email, you're gone. If you're going to ask the obvious questions, where were you born and you're going to give the exact answer. For example, if a person was born in the th uh, 13th of January, 1976. So, you could use your Islamic birth date. So go back, there are checkers to see your Islamic birth date. So you could use that. Likewise, simple questions, uh, your mother's name, your mother's maiden name. So these are all obvious questions which, which people can find that information out very easily. So the 2FA authentication system is very good. And... Um, If uh, the authentication is connected to your phone, then uh, they will do a, some swap. So they get in, get into your banking, get into your email, get into your all your accounts and, and compromise everything. So a more secure 2FA method is the authenticator app, which generates a new co code all the time. So this is different methods of security. Ideally, you'd want to have a second phone, which is offline all the time, and only when needed you connect it. And nobody has those details, and it's co co completely a ghost. So people readily trust people, but how many people can you trust? Not even your attorney, not even your doctor, not a private investigator, a professional. Because when the prosecutor speaks about jail time, then you, number one on the list, they'll give you up. So there was a story of a, a, a person from California who did business and, and he acquired a lot of wealth and he started building a castle. He bought a prime piece of land and... Uh, over time, he was quite affluent, but uh, his marriage ended up in a divorce and they separated. So uh, the attorney, his attorney contacted the other attorney while they were having a discussion to clarify something. And he forgot uh, when the phone rang, it went onto voicemail and he was supposed to switch it off, which he did, but he didn't. Inadvertently, he never pressed the right button and the answering machine was recording and they continued the conversation about hiring a private investigator so that whole recording was accessible to the wife now so the attorney said this is an opportunity let's get everything we can get out of it so uh, and it was recorded it was information so this tape went to the FBI, they raided his home and his 50-foot yacht at the marina, he was arrested and uh, besides that, they had to spend two months in prison and fined as well. So a simple thing of negligence, which is so simple and so easy. So if the attorney, the private investigator in this case here, 
the attorney didn't go to jail, the private investigator didn't go to jail, nobody suffered except the man himself. So people will give you away. So you have to be very cautious what information you put out there. Take for example Pegasus. So that in uh, infects a phone through zero click attacks. Now this is advanced tech where it does not require any interaction from the phone's owner. So somebody who owns a phone, they just simply have to dial on WhatsApp. And this is amongst the most powerful piece of spyware ever developed by a private company. So once it warms its way to the phone, Without even a person knowing, they can surveillance you for 24 hours a day, 365 copies your messages that you send, receive, harvest the photos, the calls, the records, history. It can even film through the phone's camera, activate the microphone and record conversations. It will pinpoint where you are, where have you been, where have you met. So there's a lot of algorithms which have been placed in this to make sure that they will capitalize on that hack. So spyware and uh, governments across the world, they license this, this is licensed software by an Israeli company, the NSO Group. And it has capabilities of infecting billions of phones, whether it's Android, whether it's iOS. Initially, the original version of Pegasus in 2016 was a bit more lighter, where it needed the client, the target, to activate it, whether it was through spear phishing, text messages, emails, trick targeted into clicking malicious links. But this is advanced capabilities where they will infect the user with a zero click. There is no interaction required. So it's called zero day vulnerabilities. So the flaws or the bugs in the operating system of the manufacturer, they take advantage of those vulnerabilities. So in around 2019, WhatsApp revealed that the NSO software sent malware to more than 1,400 phones by exploiting the zero-day vulnerabilities. So just a WhatsApp call, you don't even have to answer it and you are a target now. They have full, full uh, access to your information. So uh, but the fact that they could do this and they could eavesdrop on your conversation and they could eavesdrop and see exactly your, 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 your doings for the, the entire day is quite dangerous. And as the people of Iman, we need to preserve our privacy. It is an amanat and a trust. The amal for today was to utilize the miswak, so we have to utilize the miswak quite often. Amongst the times is إِذَا دَخَلَ بَيْتَهُ بَدَأَ بِالسِّوَاكِ Rewite of Muslim Aisha رضي الله عنها When Nabi alayhi salam enters the house, he used to use the miswak. So when you enter the home, leave the home. So if a person is going for salat, going to work, then five times salat plus work, other maybe six, seven times in a day, at least 14, 15 times in a day when we enter the home, and we leave the home, we'll be making amal. So all these hidayat and guidance that we are told from Quran and Hadith, we should make sure that we don't miss the sign, the alamat. Otherwise, we will have a lot of regrets follow Quran and Hadith. Otherwise, a person will have a lot of regrets. A man came home from work, he noticed his father was avoiding the grandchildren, but the grandfather always plays with the children. Is jolly, now he doesn't. So he asked the father, normally you play with the children, now you don't. So he said that uh, I, I've got a medical prescription and he showed the son and he said read the label. So the son now took the prescription and read it and it said take two pills a day, keep away from children. Keep away from children. He understood that I should keep away from children. Whereas it wasn't the point. 
So Quran and Hadith, if we interpret it wrong or don't practice on it, we will have regrets. May Allah give us tawfiq of making amal wa akhiru da'awana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.